and I, I want to say this um, on tape because I know there is so many other things that must feel this way because uh, um, it's changed now big time though. It I has. see it and it's so good to see that it's changed. But growing up, man, um, the image of things that Bollywood mm. created was so bad. Negative, yeah. yep. uh, they just made us uh, look like clowns. Right? Did, so yep. obviously no girl wanted to date a thing. A thing yep. They're like, obviously, why would I date a clown, right? Yep. Yep. So when I was growing up, I remember like I, I couldn't land any girls. Mm-hmm. Right. And that obviously hurt my ego. It hurt my self, you know, like self-worth and confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. And same thing happened when I moved here. In <laughs> fact, um, after I started dating my wife, uh, what my wife now, uh, after we started dating, <laughs> yeah. she told me that growing up, uh, she was born and raised here. She said um, growing up, she used to say that I will never marry a thing. Welcome back. Episode number 15. Uh, yeah. New city, new guests, new faces. And uh, today we got a, we got a, we even say savant in his, uh, you know, yeah. industry um, <laughs> known as Cam Singh Baines, uh, as you know, in the fashion industry, um, Sing Street. You know, I want to, this is, I think this is needed. Yeah. I feel like today, especially nowadays, the way, the trajectory of the way the people are dressing and the way they're presenting themselves, I think this is going to be a good podcast in understanding what style means and what actually means by looking good. Because looking mm. good today is what? Hey, you, I got a Gucci on my back. I yeah. got a blingy <laughs> thing that says Armani or whatever. Yeah. They're like, I look good. No, the hell you know you look good. <laughs> so I think it's good. Um, yeah, Cam, give us a background on, you know, who are, like who you are and what makes Sing Str- uh, you know, where Sing Streets come from and, you know, what inspired you to even, you had a good career behind you before this, yeah. you know, so we're going to dive into that. So sure. tell us, tell us a little bit about your journey, man. No, for sure, man. Uh, first of all, thank you for having me. And yeah. it means yeah. a lot that, uh, thank you for you coming. Know, you, you think that I'm uh, worthy of sh- uh, having my uh, <laughs> story <laughs> shared here. So, uh, <laughs> thanks for that. Uh, brother. A quick introduction. My name's uh, Cam Singh Baines, uh, and uh, most people just call me Singh Styles, man. It's like <laughs> even my family calls me Singh Styles. All my uh, friends and stuff, they call me Singh Styles. Yeah. Uh, name of my company now, uh, which is a custom suiting company. Uh, custom clothing, I'm going to say, because yeah. that's where uh, things are going. Uh, at the moment, it's all suits, but it's going to be a lot of custom clothing. Mm-hmm. Um a little bit of a summary on where it all came from. Uh, I was a kid who was born in India, uh, born and brought up there. I was uh, 17 when I moved here. I uh, went to high school for about a year and a half. Uh, thought I wanted to be a computer programmer because I'm like, it's going to be so cool. I'm going to you know, program some computer yeah. video games and stuff. Uh, went to college. I'm like, I don't want to be sitting in front of, front of a fucking computer for <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. hours and hours and then be yeah. programming. I'm like, I got to do something else. Uh, at that point, entrepreneurship wasn't a thing for me. I, I, I had not, no clue about it. I had yeah. never been exposed to it. Mm-hmm. So I just kept studying more uh, in computers, got yeah. my degree, uh, got a job um, in the IT field, mm-hmm. um, in the corporate world. Um, I worked there for about 11 years. Damn. And at some point, yeah, man, 11 years, 11 I, I, I call, time, I call time, that yeah. period, um, uh, I was sleeping. Uh, that's mm. what I say because I'm like auto mode. Yeah, auto, auto mode. mode. Yeah, yeah. It was just uh, it was just comfortable. Right? Yeah. Good company to work for. I was in downtown every time I got out. Go pay. You know, ni- nice place outside, walk yeah. around and stuff. Yeah. Um, at some point though, I found fashion as a way to express myself. Mm. Um, and when I look back at it now, I realize what really got me to get into fashion was um, I was trying to fill a void of um, it was a lack of self worth. Mm. Right. Just growing up, um, we'll get into it. Um, there's, uh, there's a lot of things that happened that I was like, I didn't I didn't feel like I had any self-worth, mm-hmm. um, super low self-confidence. Mm-hmm. So fashion was a way for me to show the yourself. world that I had something. Yeah. You know, right. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that brought me to where I am today. Is, uh, now I you know, ended up quitting that full time job yeah. um, to pursue <laughs> my career in fashion, which doesn't even feel like work. And uh, <laughs> here we are sitting in front of each other talking yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what's so beautiful, too, about, you know, your company that it's you're not just going on one base. You There's women and there's men. men yeah. 
And I feel like a lot of people like that understanding. Listen, if you want to succeed in the fashion industry, you got to, got to, got to have both sides of the spectrum. Mm. And what that allows you to do is it bring, allows you to connect with people from both sides of the world, women and men, that can help you understand the work that you're doing is not just based on gender, but it's based on what? As you said, it's a form of art. Exactly. And the inspiration can come from either side. It's not like, oh, the men can only dictate the way uh, how men can look like. That, but that's not, that's not what it is. And that's what I feel like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's truly, I feel like it's beautiful that you have both sides. Mm. No, man. And not just that. I, and that, that's, I've always made sure to do that. Um, and I uh, might get some heat for this because people <laughs> always comment. Yeah. Uh, and they're like, well, you're a sing style, so this is a brand for sings. I'm like, nah, this is sing style because I'm a sing. sing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, exactly. And I'm not going to be boxed. This, I, di- I didn't create this brand to be boxed. Yeah. I'm just a sing that has this form of, uh, you know, uh, I'm expressing, expressing my art through this, through, through this medium. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. So if you look at my, all of my branding, all my models, I've got um, bra- uh, models from different races as yep. well, because mm. that's that's who I am a- as a person. I'm not limiting myself to you know a certain you know a, a, a gender or mm. a, a race or a color. It's everyone. But I, when you get to know me more, you'll know. Like I'm a very open person. Yeah. Right. Um, I hate boundaries. Right. <laughs> so yeah. even the the latest collection that I dropped. Um, all of these ideas that come to me, there's just like random ideas and I've learned, and this happened during COVID. Like COVID was a blessing for blessing, me. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Cause I was like, I got to discover myself mm. and I realized that I really just gotta, just gotta follow my gut. So mm. it was, I was at the gym one day working out and I'm like, it'd be sick to do a men's collection, collection and yeah. have all women shoot in it. Mm. That's what the latest collection is. If That's you look at I, it, yeah. Yeah. right? And I'm like, it looks dope. I know I'm Yeah, thank you. Thank yeah, you, yeah. man. I'm, I knew I was gonna get heat for it and I uh, did a little bit. But uh, it doesn't matter, man. I'm just uh, I'm just doing me. Yeah. Mm. And then, you know, like, as you said, um, when it comes to fashion, it can't be restricted to, as you said, a race or gender or, you know, the thing is, when it comes to fashion, what does it mean by fashion? Fashion means collective individuals coming together, no, not even individuals, as a community mm. from different parts around the world. If you go anywhere, you go to you go to India, you go to Africa, you go to Europe, everybody has a different sense of fashion yep. and their style. And when you incorporate that together, that's what really means you're living that um, understanding of fashion to the highest capability that you can. And when people, as you said, try to put you in the bubble, like, mm. oh, you're saying style, like, what are you doing, doing this, doing that? Come sit down. Come in, come in my <laughs> shoes. Come in yeah, my exactly, shoes. Yeah. And you will understand why I am pa- why I love doing what I'm doing. There's a reason why I do it. Sing Styles is the representation of who I am that's putting a form of art out there to the world. And that's what's going to, you know, kind of blossom into who you are. You're not mm-hmm. just that generic robot that was born. Hey, this is what it is. This is how it is. The norm of the society. We're going to go with it. And as you know, coming from a uh, Punjabi background... <laughs> that backlash that you get man when especially when it comes to fashion yeah, yeah. oh yeah either it's easy to you're you're right on the dot yeah or it's just nah this guy's clowning he's making a mockery of Punjabi, sikhi like the judgments are crazy man, man our people are <laughs> so quick to criticize and yeah. even in the most positive things um you know thinking back to one of the campaigns that was really big uh waris aluvalia he did a campaign for gap right yep. And in the uh, in the ad in the picture, the the female model had her hand on his bug, bug. right? Mm. I see how that's controversial, right? At the same and I, and, I, and it should be addressed. At the same time, though, majority of the people were just taking all of that as a negative thing and co- completely missing the point that here is a thing on an international Trump stage, stage mm. putting us all on an international uh, on the uh, on the map it's right map, yeah, they yeah. totally miss that and that's yeah. not only happened once it keeps happening over, over and, and over. over as soon as there is something um people jump on it to find the negative or create not even find the negative man they'll create it right yeah and yeah. i think those are the kind of people that they're lacking something in their lives um they know that they can't get to the level that the person that they're looking at is at so now to make themselves feel better, better. Yeah. they're just going to try to bring them down. Bring Simple. Down. Yeah. Like, and the sad part is that a lot of times these people don't even realize what they're doing. That's mm. the sad part, right? Um, because if, if they did, right, if anyone realizes they're doing something wrong, yeah. it's not, it's, 
it's not going to sit with them, sit well with them for too long. Right? Yeah. It's it'd be like, yo, if you realize you're doing something wrong, you're going to correct it. Correct so it. it's just, it's just kind of sad that there's so many people out there that are acting and being so negative, not realizing mm. that it's actually, they're just hurting themselves. Sure. When you say something negative to somebody, you're just like, you're inside, you're hurting. Yeah. Right. And they don't realize it. Yeah. And you know what, and what you touched upon is I, I don't think people realize the impact that words they have on individuals. And and mm. I, I'm guilty of this. Uh, we all, we all have been, you know, as you grow and you progress in life, you learn about understanding if words can, the impact it has on individuals and the, what we say, the, how we carry ourselves. We wouldn't say half the stuff that we say as we're growing up because like we're taught to be like, oh man, like. It's like a carefree society. Our action doesn't have any repercussions because, oh, it is what it is. And that's what I see yeah. nowadays. What people don't realize is, you know, we're not here to dispel uh, character. We're here to live to the highest, you know, capability as individuals. And the way we carry ourselves and how we conduct ourselves is what allows you to f- us to flourish. And, you know, 100%. and one thing I want to, you know, c- uh, touch upon with your story is, you know, as you said, IT person making good money, yeah. eleven <laughs> years in. Hey, yeah. life's good. Cause yeah. a lot of my friends I know they they, they in the US. I know what they make, yeah. so I yeah. know you know it, it's it's good amount of you know the monetary value is coming in. You know, when did that mindset change? You know, we're like nah, this is not for me. And as you said, that comfort, that ability to understand what that means. Yeah. Uh, when you're floating, it's like you're floating on a cloud. Yeah. You know, and you think you can't drop. Yeah. And I think that's a dangerous place to be in because it's gonna be year twenty. You're 30, you're 40, 50, and now your retirement, looking back, you're like, damn, where yep. did life go? Yep. Yep. I wish yep. I did that. I wish I did that. So I commend you for understanding that that's not what my life to be. No, mm. man. And, you know, take us through the thought process of, and, you know, how that went about, you know, because it's not easy, man. You know, <laughs> it wasn't, man. It's, <laughs> um, I would say the way it came about was, uh, like I said, there was a huge lack of self-worth, right? And mm. at some point, um, when I discovered fashion as a way to express myself and how that came about was, uh, like I said, I was born and raised in India. So when I moved here, uh, my chacha son, who's uh, two years younger than me, still in India. Yep. Um, what would happen is, uh, well, the way it works is fashion starts in Europe and Asia first. Yep. Mm. And then, then it, it comes down to the world. Western. So then it comes here, <laughs> not last, but it's pretty late. I would say at least six months after it's kind of started there. So what used to happen was he would get all the new stuff he would send it to me. I was like, yo, this is, you know, <laughs> I'm wearing this, you know, just, just rock it, right? Yeah. And, I, I just, and I had, I somehow just had enough confidence, not even confidence. I just had a thing where like, I'm different. Mm. I knew I was different. Mm. I knew that within me. I'm like, I'm different. I'm going to dress different. Mm. So I would start wearing the stuff confidently. And in the beginning, people would be like, yo, what the fuck are you wearing? Right? Yeah. My cousin would be like, yo, that pink shirt looks funny. <laughs> right? like yeah. pink. <laughs> and then six months later, they'd be like, oh, can I borrow it? Yo, that <laughs> is like, yo. The fashion trend's going that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, yo, can I borrow that shirt? Can I borrow that pair of jeans, right? And I'm like, oh, I get it. But then people are like, hey, you know something we don't know, right? Yeah. Like, you're, you're, on, you're on the ball with this. I'm like, you know something we don't know. So that made me more interested in it. I'm mm. like, oh, I'm like this is a form of like, you know, where like this is I'm finally getting some sort of appreciation, right? Yeah. Which I never had. Um, and the biggest thing, this is and this is very important, man. It's like, and I, I want to say this um, on tape because I know there is so many other things that must feel this way because uh, um, it's changed now, big time though. It I has. see it, and it's so good to see that it's changed. But growing up, man. Um, the image of things that Bollywood mm. created was so bad. Negative, yeah. yep. uh, they just made us uh, look like clowns. Right? Did, so yep. obviously no girl wanted to date a thing. A thing yep. They're like, obviously, why would I date a clown, right? Yeah. Yep. So when I was growing up, I remember like I, I couldn't land any girls, mm-hmm. right? And that obviously hurt my ego. It hurt my self, you know, s- yeah, self-worth and wrong? confidence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? And same thing happened when I moved here. In <laughs> fact, um, <laughs> after I started dating my wife, uh, with my wife now, uh, after we started <laughs> dating, yeah. she told me that growing up, uh, she was born and raised here. She said, um, growing up, she used to say that I will never marry a saint. Think, man, really? you hear oh, that yeah. so often, yeah. though. You know how many people, like, 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 even like, the, I'm talking to a person right now, and then they say, I never, s- my friends, like, I never saw you talking to someone that wears a plug. I'm like, why? Why is that such a far-fetched idea? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? So that, that's what I, so that's, that's what I was dealing with, right? So finally, when I started dressing well and people started appreciating, I'm like, yo, this is cool. Like, I, I didn't realize it at, at, in the moment, 
but that's what made me go like dive deep into it and i researched men's fashion inside out right mm-hmm. and yep. i started experimenting with my own style so i would go in and at that time i didn't have that much money so anytime i went shopping mm-hmm. i would just buy whatever was on sale just Rolling random on random budget. stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and now at home okay. i had all this random stuff that i had to make work so i started being more creative, creative. with it mm. and be like yo i'm gonna make this work with this and be like oh shit this is cool we never this thought this together yeah. Yeah, exactly right <laughs> yeah and then uh one day one one of my uh so when, once i started doing that i'm like you know what let me share this information with uh everyone else mm-hmm. so i created the instagram account it wasn't sing styles at that time yeah um and i started creating this collages of like here's a pair of pants here's a shirt shoes um and I would explain how it all worked together, mm-hmm. right? And people started getting a lot of value from it. So my cousin, well, I call him a cousin because he's super close, a uh, family <laughs> friend, I'll, um, he goes, you're wearing this stuff on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Why don't I take pictures of you? And put it on. And mm. p- instead of posting those collages, post your own pictures. pictures so yeah. I'm like, sure, why not? I'm like, I'm not camera shy, let's do it. And that just took off. Because mm. they're like, here's a thing. We've never, because when I started, um, I think it was 2014 was when Sing Styles kind of officially First started. started yeah. I think all around the world, maybe there were four, four like si- there was Sing Street uh, Style guys uh, out of the UK. Yep. There's a yep. group of yep. them, right? And there was uh, one guy out of Australia, maybe someone in India, one, one other person. There but weren't not that many. many things, yeah. Yep. Mm. So it really caught on. They're like, here's a thing that dresses really well. Mm. Um, and once again, that made me dive further into it. So you know, one thing kind of led to another. Um, and that's I, I, the, the reason the question you were asking was what made me switch. So now that I was at a point where um, I'm doing all of this and getting all this appreciation and gaining confidence, um, people around me, man, my, my fan, friends and family, they're like, you have a talent. Why don't you turn this into a career? I'm career, like, yeah. fuck, I don't know how. Like, I don't know what, what I'm mean, supposed yeah, to do with this. Yeah, yeah. Right. At the same time, when I was in the IT at the IT jo- uh, in the IT job, um, I didn't mind going working there because of the whole environment and everyone else like you know it was a good company to work for Mm -hmm. but it wasn't fulfilling like it Mm -hmm. wasn't like i didn't wake up every single day like yo i'm gonna go you know do some it shit (laughs) i was just like okay i'll go to work then i didn't mind it um maybe that's why i you know it ended up being 11 years instead of like four or five Mm -hmm. Uh, if i hated the job um then it would have taken less time but honestly man i i'm a I'm a big, big believer of everything happens for a reason, right? Mm. The law firm that I was at, uh, was one of the best law firms in Vancouver. So everyone dressed to the T, um, right? So I'm, and I know for sure that had a role to play in my, you know, in my mindset as well, in my image. Like I saw everyone dressed up. I'm like, I, funny thing is the, the first day that I started there, uh, they take a picture of you to put it on their internet Internet page, right? Um, and I was scrubbed out, man. <laughs> <laughs> and the day I left there, well, even before that, um, so many people at the firm started saying, like, Cam, you're the best dressed guy, be- best dressed guy here. Hands mm. down. You get that all the time, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. If I'd be walking around, if I, if I gave somebody a compliment, I'd be like, oh, shit, I got a compliment Cam. from Cam. It's a yeah. huge deal, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So I know for sure that had a role to play. Um, mm. But it was just the, the, you know, the lack of, the, uh, the void of feeling uh, feeling uh, fulfillment, mm. right? And when I started feeling that from the the styling side of things, because now when I was putting all these images out there, I had so many guys reaching out going, this is great to see, right? Like, mm. you know. I needed that. Yeah, I needed that. I You know, how do I go about doing yeah. this, yeah. right? And now I found a purpose. I'm like, you know, my, what I'm doing means something. Yep. Mm. And honestly, man, that's one of the biggest things. I've heard that from so many people, um, you know, listening to other podcasts and stuff. It's finding purpose, mm-hmm. right? So now I had a purpose. Yep. Mm-hmm. So that's what made me go, I got to figure this out. I got to turn this into a career. Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. Yeah. understanding a purpose. That's huge. And you know, I, I think one of the things I want to touch upon is like, as you said, as being a sing, sometimes like the way you dressed is, it, is critiqued because mm-hmm. there's, there's an image, the way we ought to carry yourself. And that's it. And, you know, like, it's funny that you say, like, you know, my friends, they're like, man, you're the style you're saying I know. Because things like, I don't care for people's opinion. Yeah. If I like something and I like how it sits on me, right. I'm going to wear it. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when I was in Miami and I wore this, like, snake printed kind of, like, shirt. <laughs> it's like, because Miami, man, you yeah, got to yeah, look yeah, good. Yeah. So, yeah. and my friend's like, damn, they're like, yo, I need some of that shirt. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, it's like, as you said, I used to be that shy kid growing up. I, 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 was, b- I was born here, but I lived in India for 10 years. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, my understanding of a fashion is from back home. It's like, you know, but when you're growing up, it's like, 
you don't have that. The sense of fashion is like you don't have it at all. You don't have that. You're around people like everything is covered. Um, like yo, if you're saying to see I make a pre pony, age in pony, if you age a pony, they're like, oh, low kiki sochange, this, that, right? Yeah. In my head, for the longest time, I would say I only started like dressing how I want to freely. I want to say like when I was like, what, maybe 23. 22 yeah. and that's mad damn that's how that changed how you feel right yeah, 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 yeah i got confidence i'm like hey 100 percent. oh yeah nobody i, I can't be touched <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and you know i took pride the way i looked you know so i think with you having you started back in 2014 and mm-hmm. when people see that the more things are like damn i could hey i want to do that too because like yeah. it, it's not easy to just step out of the comfort zone when you don't have anything out there and in our culture is like that because I feel like now we don't. I feel like we progressed a lot, but we still need to, you know, take a couple of steps. But we're progressing in the right way. We are, know? man. I, I agree. I agree. Our uh, our society, like even even you know whether a person is a singer or not. I when I do my consults, there's so many young guys that come in to get suits, mm-hmm. and I'm the kind of person that that likes to know people. So I'm always chatting. Like, you know, what do you do? What drives you and stuff? Um, there's so many times that there is like you know. 23, 24 year olds that have started their businesses. And I'm like, this is so good, good to see. Because yeah. yeah. I didn't get started t- until I was 30. 30, yep. mm. 30 was when I got introduced to entrepreneurship, uh, to personal development. And that's when I started like, going, you know what? I, I got to figure this out. I'm, I'm turning 40 in a few months. And, yep. it, you know, it's been 10 years now. But now saying, uh, seeing all of these young guys get into it at like, even like you know, as young as like 19, yep. 23, mm. 24. Yeah. It's so great to see, man. Uh, we're, we're, you know, our community is going the right way for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'm so happy to see that. What are the, some of the black, because like we, me and Mokhtar, what are some backlash that you face? Like <laughs> and when, when you start, because like, man, it, it is um, in our community, when you're starting up that young, yeah. when there's not much out there, it's like, a, it's like a notion that he's making a mockery of a culture. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, and uh, that's the one thing I want to get rid of is like, just because I represent this, I know what I, I represent. I want to represent to the fullest. Um, don't judge me the based off, you know, the way I dress myself or this, that, because they have a perceived notion like, nah, you have to dress like this. Otherwise, you can't wear it. Yep. Mm. It's yep. like, where does it say that? Yeah. yeah. You know? And then that's, it goes to the same thing of like, you know, we we're chatting earlier off camera about uh, a different topic, but like everyone being um, at a different point in their journeys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Um and judgment is one thing that I, I don't want to use the word hate, but like that's I, I really despise that. Like when someone judges somebody, I'm like you they don't even know you. their story, you don't yeah, know yep. what they've been through. So <laughs> yeah. to judge somebody within like a few seconds just because you saw an image or you s- had they said a word or something that you didn't like, it's, that's just ridiculous, man. Like it's like there is you don't know what their life's been, you don't nope. know where you know where 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 they are in their journey, right? And I try to remind myself uh, that with, um, you know, different metaphors in my life. Like, you know, if when I'm working out, I used to be the person who'd be like, you know, if I saw somebody bigger than me uh, lifting the same weight as me or less weight, I'd be like, oh, what the hell is that guy doing? He's not strong enough. <laughs> and then what happened was I've, I've had my fair, fair share of injuries. I've torn my chest once. I've messed up my shoulder a couple of times. <laughs> and it brought me down from a much heavier weight to a lower weight so and while i was it. working out i'm like now i'm pushing instead of pushing 90s i'm pushing 10s yep. i'm like somebody could be looking at me right now like, what's this going guy what's <laughs> wrong with <laughs> this guy thing. right yeah, yeah. i'm like that's life yeah. right you don't know how injured somebody is at one what, what point in their life mm. why would you judge them right mm-hmm. and once you realize that man like it, it frees you and it's just you know it makes it easier for yourself because once again when you judge somebody you're, you're just like, it's inside doesn't feel good, right? Mm-hmm. You're just, you're just, uh, you know, you're dissing somebody. It's it's not a good feeling. And yep. energy is everything, man. That's, I'm a big believer of that as it well. Yep. Everything is energy, right? Yep. The way you do things, um, you know, your ability to do more comes mm-hmm. from you being able to change your energy, yep. mm-hmm. right? And I think um, what you kind of touched on that is everybody carries scars, uh, no matter yeah. w- who you are, what point of stage in life you are. And I think what's beautiful about nowadays is regardless of where you are in life, how old you are, how young you are, how successful you are, I think understanding that you can gain knowledge from any everybody and, and understanding what that means, don't judge people based off, as you said, your first interaction. Understand who they are. If they're not providing you of value, 
you have the right to say, be like, hey, I don't see any value in the conversation way. I want to distance myself, mm -hmm. which is completely normal. As you, as you spoke about before, that's when the selfishness come in. He's like, this is not what I want to surround myself with. But to judge someone based off the scars that they created, what about your scars? You think you're better than that because, man, he's 40. He's, he's, why, why are you doing this? Hey, you, you're 50. Why are you doing like? What does it have to do with it? your journey is your journey. His journey is his journey. That has no indication of where you're going to be in a year from now, six months from now. It's a way you, you know, see the world. And I think uh, and I think majority of the time, as you spoke on a little bit, is finding that real purpose. And, and I mean that. I tell people, I'm like, find your purpose. There's mm -hmm. a lot of young like kids that come from our, you know, communities that I see. They feel like they're suppressed based off how our family structure is in our community. And I see this a lot, man, because it deterred me. Like, I love, you know, I love, like, content creating. I love talking to people. And my friends in back in 2012 pushed me, man. They're like, man, make you funny as hell. Like, <laughs> like you're goofy. You say the most weirdest shit yeah. at the weirdest time. Like, <laughs> I'm like, I light up the room, you know. And then they're like, man, open a, uh, start That's a YouTube channel. That's yeah, they're like, start a YouTube channel. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. man, I can't do this. Like, who gonna watch me, this, that? And looking back at it, now I see so many kids that are asking me, they're like, yo, my parents, like, um, they say go do the, do the insurance, go into homework. I'm like, what do you like doing? Yeah. Mm. yeah. He's like, and there's one kid, you know, Tanroop from Apna Hockey. Mm -hmm. He came to me one day. He's like, I'm like, what do you like doing? He's like, I like creating content. I'm like, listen, I literally said, I'm like, you know, humbly tell your parents, I don't want to sell life insurances <laughs> or I don't want to sell insurance. I don't want to sell houses. Yeah. I love making content and yeah. that's what my inner passion is. I'm like, you love doing that, right? Yeah. Fuck everything else. I literally yeah. told him, like, fuck everything else. Don't worry about the monetary value. Yeah. It will come as your work will speak for itself. Yep. Quality mm -hmm. will always speak because quality comes from a sense of passion. Yeah. And when it, when it speaks from a sense of passion, the whole world will actually genuinely feel connected to that mm -hmm. because your project is based off your personal mission rather than I'm just trying to do this for the money. 100% mm -hmm. man. Like, there's only so far you can go when you're chasing money. Yep. Um, but when you're being your true self and putting out good work, uh, you will find people that um, like that work and that want to work with you. Uh, if you're selling something, they want to buy from you because of who you are and what you've created. Yep. Mm. And, uh, and people can tell, man. Like if you're just if you're being um, genuine, people can tell. If you're being fake mm. um, and just trying to do it for the money, it's so easy to tell. People yep. aren't stupid, right? Um, as humans, we're, we're, we have that capability Ability of to being you know being able to understand that um and but going back to your point of like you know families uh not understanding i know it's it's still an issue it and is, it's yeah. going to be because the thing is uh and it's not our parents fault it's a right? nuance in our, yeah. in our culture it is it's, and it's not our parents fault nope. all they any every each parent all all they want is to make sure that their kid is taken Success care of care, and yeah. they're not going to be in a situation where they're hurting right yep. so they the mean well it's just that there's a lack of not even knowledge yeah understanding is the word education. right they haven't seen this this yeah, is no. all new to them yeah. right we see it we're, we're exposed to it we see where it could go mm. but they can't right so i think it really comes down to we gotta show them yeah, yeah, yeah. At the end of the day, we do because like yeah. we are because like we are standing on this pedestal right and they're looking at us like what are you doing mm -hmm. but but when you put it into perspective like hey look this is what it can present these are the people that are doing it and I can do this too because I, I enjoy this stuff. And I and we talk about like me and Mook all the time. The onus is upon us. Mm -hmm. The onus is not upon us to judge our parents. We're like, oh, you guys don't let me do this. Don't let me do that. Okay, yeah. sit them down. Be like, guys, like I enjoy this and I feel like I'll be more yeah. successful, more fulfilled yeah. in life if I did this. Even if it means I'm making a little bit less money, I'm living my life to the, you know, the, the highest purpose that I was put out here on the earth yeah. to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think when you have these talks more rather than under, uh, like shoving these conversations with your parents because they're like, oh, they won't understand. Why won't they understand? Have you had a talk with yeah. them? Yeah. Have you had a sit down with them? Exactly. You One know? more thing I'm going to say, man, is like uh, to that point, I think just in general, um, especially within our community, we just need to communicate better. Mm -hmm. with our parents with our family um and that's you know it's as immigrant parents it's not always the easiest thing to do because you know when they came here all they had to do was make sure that they're able to survive here so they're working like yep. two or three, three jobs, jobs yep. right so all there labor. isn't even that time yep. but mm -hmm. our generation now we're so privileged that we have these opportunities exactly. like i've got a two-year-old mm -hmm. right so and I've, now that i have my own business biggest thing for me is 
freedom of time. I've always said that ever since I started my business, I'm like being able to do what I want on my time, mm-hmm. right? Money comes afterwards. Money's going to follow. And I, it's always followed, but it's the freedom of time. And now that I have that freedom of time, um, I'm very intentional about how I ra- I'm, I'm raising my daughter, mm. right? And I think that naturally was just missing from our parents' generation because yeah. they just didn't have the privilege of doing that. They, they had, the had to make it work. Yeah, they, yeah. They, their mindset was, um, what's it called? Survival. It's survival, yes. Yeah. Their sure mindset enough. is survival. Okay, we're in this country. You don't have nothing in a bank account. We're coming from nothing. How do I put my kid in a position to succeed in life? And I think people underestimate what that really means because I'm like, we're taking away the sacrifice they did. If I tell you to today, myself, I'm like, okay, I got to go to a different country, not knowing I'm going to have a place to sleep, not knowing I have a bank, any money in a, in a bank account, yeah. and I got to succeed so I can have the next generation to not to live the life that we had to go through. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I think the understanding, uh, sometimes I feel like people don't understand to the full extent. I'm like, slowly people are understanding more and more because mm-hmm. oh, now we're having these conversations. Yeah. You know, we have, we have platforms such as a podcast or, you know, other content created. Like, even what Just Meet said uh, w- w- with his new show, what was it called? With the, the late bloomer? Yeah, late bloomer, yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, it, it kind of taps into, like, a lot of them. I watched it with my mom. Yeah. yeah, my mom's. <laughs> I, I, I did. Yeah, I, know, no, I watched it with my mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. certain scenes, you know, I, I skipped over. But like, yeah, so, yeah. but <laughs> I, I asked her opinion. I'm like, mom, what do you think of this? See, yeah. that's those are the kind of conversations that it takes, right? It's not. It's not that. No, you've never had that um, communication bridge with your parents, and then all of a sudden one day you're gonna show up, be like, mom, I'm not gonna, mom, dad, I'm not gonna <laughs> be the oh, yeah, lawyer. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. do this. How do you think they're gonna take this? So yeah. to build that communication, I think it's a daily thing, and it starts very small. And um, there is a very important lesson that like my, my wife taught me, right? So uh, when we got married, I quickly realized that I didn't have as good uh, of uh, you know communication with my parents as she did. So. Yeah. The smallest things make such a big difference. Mm-hmm. Every time, you know, uh, she would see me like, you know, Satsrikal means Satsrikal daddy, right? Mm-hmm. My dad would come uh, home from work, Thora didn't come here, Sega. Like she would ask mm-hmm. him how, like, they mm-hmm. would. I'm like, I never did that. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. I never did that, right? Yeah. Obviously, there's <laughs> not going to be uh, that bond, right? Mm. It's it's so many times I'd be, I, it's changing now because I'm being so intentional about making sure that we build that bond, but we'll be driving somewhere. Complete silence. Music would be playing. Yeah, we wouldn't so say a word to each that other. Is yeah, so yeah, yeah. True, man. That is and true. And it's just like, especially <laughs> with dads, my mom I've been super close with, but like dad, I didn't have that. And yeah. now I'm like, I realize, I'm like, yo, I'm like, that's not cool. It's my dad. I got to build this bond. So I now I find things that he's interested in yep. because I know mm-hmm. he doesn't have that mindset of, you know, saying I'm going to build this bond with my, um, w- with my son, but I have the responsibility. I mm-hmm. got to do it. So over driving, I'll talk about cricket. I'll talk about something he did or, you know, he likes and just make a conversation. And I've seen the change, man. I've yeah, seen the change. It's um, huge. But even before that, man, I've just been super lucky that when I wanted to um, do this and quit my full-time job and go into fashion, yeah, and supportive. it was a leap of faith that I had to take. There was like, I knew my income was going to get cut. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, I was going to have no money coming in because when I first started and i started going into fashion Mm -hmm. all i was doing was um just personal uh, like uh, fashion blogging yeah and i was trying to be a personal shopper uh for which the market here in vancouver is very small right Mm. um and i I would never forget this day i was sitting um on the couch wife next to me mom and dad on the other side and this was a time where like you know what should i do should i quit my job and i'm like i i can't right and you know what if this doesn't work out yeah. yeah and my dad goes well you know, because he used to pay f- uh, part of the mortgage and stuff. And he goes, I will work. He's he's 52, so he's 72 years old, wow. mm. right? And this was five years ago, five, six years ago. So he goes, 66. He goes, I will work for as long as needed, and I will take care of the mortgage. You do what you want. Mm. Right? You do what you got to do, right? And then uh, my wife goes, I will work two jobs if I have to. You go do what you need to do. Mm. Yeah. Right? And like that kind of support. So yeah. I was, my family was super understanding. And... I was I was super blessed in that sense, mm-hmm. and then I was like, "Yo, I." And with that being said, there's no way I'm not gonna give it my all, well, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's why I jumped in. Um, and uh, <laughs> this is another conversation, but <laughs> there's a time when that I had to um, before I even started the suits because I was trying to be a personal shopper. Yeah. I was trying to get clients for that, so I started cold calling because uh, that cousin of mine who took my pictures, yeah, he was uh, like, if it wasn't for him. 
I wouldn't be sitting here as things sells. Mm. He pushed me to quit my job um, and pursue fashion as a career, mm. Mm. right? And the way that he had built his business, which is in real estate marketing, was cold calls. He used to build websites for uh, realtors. Mm. So he had a list of all these realtors in all of Lower Mainland, all of BC. Gives me the list. He's like, start cold calling. Yeah. Right. And that is the hardest thing that I've done it is. in my life till now. Yeah. Yeah. And if I can help it, I would never do it again. Yeah. <laughs> I would never do it again. Man. I made a thousand phone oh, calls to get that just one. Yes. Uh, I got like, three, hey, three clients out of that. See? That's it. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, I want, we want to dive into more about like me and Moko talking on the, on the way uh, to Vancouver. I'm like, um, we're talking about how the company itself that you have sing styles. I think people have this, you know, understanding that, oh, he overcharges for his stuff. Yeah, oh, yeah. why is he, oh, wh why does he think he's worth that much? But I don't think people understand the behind the, you know, scenes, the amount of detail oriented you are and how well you take care of your client. It builds up to that pricing point. You mm -hmm. know, if it's outlandish, then you wouldn't have a client team. You exactly. wouldn't have a client base. Exactly. I think people need to understand when, when you want to look good, you got to pay for it. Pay for yeah. it. You know, like, how do you balance that, man? Like, we're starting up, and then, you know, as, you, as you're becoming, you know, more and more, uh, you're, uh, what's it called? Um, you're more renowned. You're working with people. Uh, your name is getting out there. How do you balance that? Because a lot of people do take advantage of that, where they fluctuate their price from here to here, but like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, how yeah, how yeah, do you yeah. balance that? Because there are a lot of people that do take advantage of that. 100%, 100% man. It's like, the pricing is... Uh, it's it's a value exchange is what it is, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so when exchange, people, yeah. the my, my clients come to me because they see the value, right? It's it's the the relationship that I build with them, um, the w the outfits that I create for them. Uh, if they didn't see the value, they wouldn't come to me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, there is other companies that charge way less than I do, yeah. Um, and there's companies that charge way, way more, more than, than I do, mm -hmm. yeah. right? And the one one of the companies that charges way more. I actually, m I, I give kudos to that guy because I'm like, and I see the values that he's created, mm. completely different market, right? He's, mm. he's got a different clientele. And I always say this, I'm like, everybody has their market, right? Mm. When you just do you and you provide value, your people will come to you. Simple as that. Yep. Yeah. You don't have to go chase them, man. Like uh, you, you do you, you and p your people will come and find you, yep. Yep. right? If somebody's selling for less, Maybe they're not, they maybe they maybe they have that value to provide and they don't see it in themselves. Because mm. when I first started, so before the um, before the suits was like I was saying, person shop, person yeah, shopping. Shopper, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when I was personal shopping, um, I actually went to school to get certified for it. It's a three month program. Uh, I got certified as a, um, a as an image consultant. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, there's a few uh, people in Vancouver that do that, and they have they mostly charge by the hour, right? So it'd be like you know seventy five dollars an hour or one hundred fifty dollars an hour, which is pretty much like you know I'll the take base. you shopping, yeah. I'll help you dress better kind of thing. Mm. When I first started, um, I sat down, I uh, went to all of their websites, looked at how they did everything, all of my research, uh, pricing, and everything. Mm. It was so difficult for me to even charge $50 an hour because I didn't see the self worth. The value, yeah. Right? yeah. I didn't see the value. Like, I, I didn't feel like I could even charge 50 bucks, <laughs> bucks an hour, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, when I stopped doing um, personal shopping, I was charging $200 an hour. Mm -hmm. And I stopped because I'm like, I need to charge more because I know what my time's worth, yeah. um, but I can't justify charging more. Exactly. So I stopped, mm -hmm. yeah. right? So it, it's value exchange, man. That's the yeah. di difficult part, right? It's just evaluating what your self-worth is like i mean kind of going backtrack to like what led you into dressing better it's quite similar to yeah. my story too because i was like man i'm not getting any girls here man. <laughs> and i was like i was wearing joggers all the time hoodies all the time and i was like you know what i'm gonna step out of my zone i was so freaking afraid of like wearing different clothes but then started doing more research and i'm like okay like if i want people to come up to me besides the girls and stuff just being professional <laughs> And being able to have a conversation, I need to know how to speak better. I know how to, how to dress better and all that stuff. Now to this point, it's just like my buddy, who's way more intelligent than I am, right? And he's dressing, like he dresses very good. But even like 
when we were driving to Calgary, yeah, he, he literally calls him. me because he, he got a suit and he's, he's like, like I'm, getting getting a, I'm getting a tailor. <laughs> Sends me a picture. I'm like, okay, yo, I got to fix this. You got to yeah, fix yeah. this. <laughs> and he's like, bro, he's like, I feel different. I feel so different. Yeah. It's such an influence. I'm like, I felt so happy for him. I was like, bro, you need to understand how much your self-worth is. Mm -hmm. Don't undervalue that shit. Yep. And just the way you dress, this is going to influence everything else in your life too. Like the way you, you know, other type of clothes you wear because it, it happened to me. Yep. Right. And it, it influences um, being able to talk to people like how we're talking. It right changes now. the way you speak, man. It changes it the does. way that you carry yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It changes your energy. Yeah. And people can feel that without you even saying a word. You can walk into a room and people will feel your energy yeah. mm. just because you feel a certain way about a yourself. Certain way, yeah. it, I've noticed it so many times. And then I've had people come up to me afterwards be like, you know, man, like I love the way that you're so confident. Yeah. Right? I'm like, you know, or my friends um, have said it like you were super. I'm like, I didn't even do it. Like I'm not doing anything different. I'm yeah. just, just who I being, am. Just who I'm am. comfortable with myself. Yeah. I'm content. Um, I like dressing well and I, I feel great the way you know when, when i dress well and mm. it, whatever difference that makes people can notice yeah right. but it's just yeah like 100 percent. And, and i think it's like going back to self-worth right what your price is for your time right of course it takes time to build up to that worth but don't under don't undervalue your own time just because you're afraid of what other people put their price at yeah. you gotta understand you put in the work you deserve to put a price on it 100 percent. right yeah. and especially of course i mean i don't want to backlash our culture too much but it's just like again man there's always this thing where like thinking of uncle auntie and they're always going to be backlashing and be like oh why why are you charging so much <laughs> yeah, yeah. right I'm like yeah. no honestly bro i i have people <laughs> that come to me and they're like it's too much i have actually i will tell them where they can get a cheaper suit yeah right out of um, respect. I will help them out, man. I'll yeah. be like, you know what? I'm not gonna understand. People have budgets. That's totally yeah. fine. Like you have it's a budget, fair. or you don't want to spend more. Go here, you'll mm -hmm. get it. Because I know that it's gonna be a different experience. I've had people come back, bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've yeah. had people come. They've <laughs> gone somewhere else, and we like, you know, we went there. Yeah. Even just from a console without even getting a suit, mm -hmm. they've come back. I've had people. This is funny. This uh, one guy was getting a suit. Uh, I was doing his measurements, and I like I chat with him, right? Yeah. So I'm like, yo, I'm like. How did you hear about me? He's like, oh, my friend told me he got a suit. Uh, he yeah. got a suit from you. Yeah. Right? I'm like, oh, I'm like, what's his name? So yeah. I, so I should, uh, I'll thank him, right? Yeah. And he said the name, and I'm like, it doesn't ring a bell. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. I'm like, it's possible that I don't remember. I'm like, <laughs> but let me look it up. Yeah. Right? So I have uh, all my clients. I type the name in, nothing comes up. Mm. And he's like, yo, I'll call him right now. So he Facetimes him. And he's like, yo, I was like, you got a suit from me? He's like, no, 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 I was gonna get a suit, but I'm like, that's a huge compliment. There's somebody that hasn't even come Part to me yet, to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's happened so many times. We're like go to sing styles yeah. go go see that or somebody who's come and had a consult um and then gone somewhere else and gotten a suit and then a few months later come back it's like mm. it wasn't a good experience yeah yeah, Damn, yeah. so it's, it's the it's, it's yeah so it's it's the value exchange it's the Influence, experience yeah. it's the whole um you know the the word that i keep hearing from a lot of clients that go somewhere else and come back is like the vibe wasn't there mm. this is like you know this the vibe's different here mm. like yeah. when, when, when we sit down the vibe is totally different because yeah. right? i'm like dude i don't ki i don't i'm not selling you a suit i've never <laughs> thought that mm. when i when i sit down with somebody but like let's create what you're gonna feel your best in this is most of my clientele it's uh wedding clients right mm. so i'm like this is your big day right yeah these yeah, are the yeah. pictures that you're gonna look at for the rest of your life yeah. right let's make sure that you love them right mm. and I'm, I'm not afraid to give my honest opinion people come up with crazy ideas they're like oh i'm gonna wear i'm like bro i'm like don't do it i was I, i'm pretty yeah. i used to be when i first started selling the suits i used to be a little bit kind of you know a hesitant hesitant to yeah, be yeah, like yeah. you know if i say this what if they go somewhere else yeah i'm like i like i would rather not do this i'm like i can't see my client wearing something that i i know that it's not gonna look good yeah. and people appreciate that people mm -hmm. appreciate the honesty, honesty. and uh, people appreciate that i'm not trying to make a sale yeah and that's when you actually end up making a sale, sale. because yeah. you know that the people are like you know what He's not trying to like yeah. just just make money off make of money me. Off of He's it, yeah. making me something that I'm gonna love. Simple as that. Yeah. yeah. No, I think and one of the thing I felt like with your journey is uh, in the fashion industry it allows you to open so many doors, man. Because mm. um, fashion industry doesn't just end that or you know just oh I gotta dress up people. It opens up to a whole different segment, man. Mm. There's celebrities. There's movies. There's this. They're like, yo, we want that theme for what we're doing. Or mm -hmm. we want that, like, help us understand, like, how, how that open, you know, 
different doors and different industries. And the people that you worked with that you feel like, oh, wow, like this was an eye opening. Okay, maybe I don't want to work with that person. <laughs> like, you know, yeah. This person was cool. like, you know, it, it's yeah. like a mix and match thing. It's like, oh, maybe I don't want to work with another influence or I don't want to work with another yeah. artist, yeah. you know, because yeah. now you get a taste of what the industry is like. Right. So what kind right. of doors that opened up for you, like as you progress through the journey that, you know, allows you to flourish in your, you know, yeah, industry? Mine's actually kind of been opposite where um, I'm where at, uh, I'm at where I'm at um, after going through those avenues that you, that mm-hmm. you mentioned. So yeah, I started yeah. off as a, you know, just blogging about fashion, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. That got me into now people wanting to shop with me because they, they wanted they to see look, the uh, look better as well. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so the story is, one time I was, um, um, you probably know the bridge here, the Alex Fraser Bridge. Yeah. I was driving over it. And I see a whole bunch of things on their motorcycles right by. I'm like, oh, that's f-. And they were sick. <laughs> yeah. done, right? Yeah, sick yeah. motorcycle club. I'm like, that's sick. I'm like, I want to do that. Yeah. Right? So I went and got my motorcycle license. And I uh, reached out to them. I'm like, yo, I'm like, can I join the club? And they're like, sure, let's do it. Right? So I got a membership and stuff, started writing. And uh, I think a couple of months later, they go, uh, they sent a message in the group going, uh, somebody wrote a song for us. And oh, we're going to make a music video. Yeah. Um, so why don't you guys all come out? We're just going to ride around and stuff and then get a few clips and then we'll go from there. Okay, yeah. So the first day, um, we rode around. They, they made videos and stuff. And then the president of the club and the uh, um, videographer, they come up to me and they go, hey, the, do you want to be the, the main guy the in main this video? Leader, You've got yeah. the look, right? You, yeah. you, you look confident. You're a young guy. Just gonna, you're going to just lip sync the whole song. I'm like, I'll do it, right? Yeah, why not? <laughs> and then... Um, that kind of introduced me to, uh, so I, I did it. As I was like the main lead in the song, but that kind of introduced, introduced me to the whole music video kind of um, world, yeah, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Um, and the funny thing, we we're chatting about where the name came from earlier. Mm-hmm. Um, so that videographer, yeah, yeah the, that oh, videographer okay. then um, <laughs> afterwards go, comes to me and goes, hey man, he's like, I have, I have this idea. Um, why don't we create a show where you just give fashion advice like you do on your Instagram and your Snapchat anyway? Mm. We'll package it up. We'll sell it to like Sony, uh, like not Sony, sorry, the whatever the lo- one of the local TV sh- uh, channels here. Yeah. I'm like, sure, let's do it. So he comes over, um, films the first episode, mm. and then at the end of it, it's like, oh, we're gonna get, sell it to them. What should we call it? I'm like, I don't know what to call it. He's like, <laughs> well, you're a sing and you're styling. How about we call it sing styles? I'm like. Sure, I'm like, let's Say call less. it Sing Style. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. that's where the name came from. Damn, like, that's crazy. I didn't come up yeah, with man. it. Um, that guy did. So, uh, you know, thanks to him. But uh, <laughs> that's where the name came from. And it came from no, a random sweet. people. You <laughs> Rad- saw riding a bike. You're <laughs> like, hey, I want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So the things that, you know, you don't know where something's going to lead to, right? Yeah. So anyways, uh, you know, got into the music. I installed a few music videos and stuff. Styled a couple of movies. Um, and just kept following my gut. Mm-hmm. Like that's, I've, I've always just done that. We're like, you know, what's what's next for me? Like what else can I explore? Uh, did a bit of modeling. I don't like to call myself a model, even though that's what it says on my, uh, on my <laughs> Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just says it because I'm signed up with an agency <laughs> and <laughs> acting with an agency and stuff. But yeah. um, it's it's led me to a bunch of those things. Like, you know, I'm, I'm signed up with a modeling agency. I'm signed up with an acting agency. I've done a couple of ads for uh, some big companies and stuff. Uh, but all of that and what I found the most value and fulfillment in was when I got to actually sit down with uh, somebody one-on-one and mm. that's when I'm doing a suit for somebody, right? Because mm. I'm, like I said earlier, uh, I'm the kind of person that really likes to know people. Mm. So when I meet somebody, I ask them questions. I'm like, what do you do? Or like, you st- you're doing this, what were you doing before this? What made you want to do this, right? Because yeah, okay. I'm, I'm just naturally so curious because I learned so much. You, like, like you said earlier, you, learn, you can learn from anyone and everyone, mm-hmm. you know, right? So I, I find that I'm able to do it when I'm talking one-on-one with, uh, with my clients. Yeah. So mm-hmm. that's, that's why I'm, I'm like, I'm sticking to this for now. And I never say, like, this is what I'm doing for forever. I mean, we don't know where it's going to go. never know. Yeah. 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 <laughs> at the point, I mean, at this time or period of, you know, frame, it gives you the most, um, you feel like, value. And this is what you enjoy. 100%. And I think uh, people get lost in a lot of the time, the nitty-gritty stuff. But like, man, I got to st- I gotta do this, but, man, I can't miss out on this. They're doing that. Mm. No, don't focus on what other people got going on. Focus on your own focus craft and yourself. perfecting. Because yeah. as I said before, your quality will speak and people will come to you naturally. Mm-hmm. And... Along that process, as you said, it takes on different journeys. Different people reach out. You don't know who who's watching, who's looking, and what person walks in your store. 
he might not even bought the suit, but the conversation you had with them will left an impact on them. Yeah. And that small details a lot of the time gets left out when it comes to a lot of the people that do have these type of stores or they did uh, you know, screw the store app, like any any, any type business, of man, any business, any yeah. Business. Screw like it, it's just like You're dealing with people like you know, if you can't build a connection, if you can't make them feel like they're welcome, they're welcome and yeah. you're not just another customer to them another number it's they're gonna feel it yeah, yeah. yeah. it's like on to the yeah. next one and you know it's funny like <laughs> I, I own like a papa john's um and the people that come through like man it's like i i'm like a go- I, I i'm a happy person um i always have high energy people are like man what's wrong with you it's 11 a.m <laughs> go to sleep i'm like no nah, I'm, I'm happy yeah. like life is good there's no it's I infectious gotta, man people yeah. uh, people appreciate it right because yeah. the thing is you don't know what somebody's walking into that door uh how what their di- day's been like and your smile or your the way it you said hi them. could just cheer them up they could just you know yeah. if, even if it's for a few moments you added that you know a little bit of happiness to their life a little bit of cheer to their life that's mm-hmm. so funny you say that i live by this mantra i tell people i'm like man if I came, if I'm sitting across you for the 10 seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, if you felt like this joy of happiness or you forgot what was happening in your real life and anything that's going around you, I take joy in that. Because mm-hmm. for that moment, a period of time, you know, like hey, all the issues I had, I forgot about it, made me smile, you know, it made me feel like, oh, this is, this is, this is nice. And I feel like people don't realize the impact yeah. that has on people. Mm. And we should practice that more i agree man i agree because the thing is you don't know how like you said you don't know how that's even if it's sometimes it's not just for a few moments that could completely put them on a different trajectory, trajectory than yeah, you know, yeah. they, somebody could be like honestly man like I, i've heard this somebody could be suicidal but they ended up having a conversation with somebody yeah and it just come you know it, it we're them away from it yeah right? nope. it, it's whether it's, it's like huge. whether it's for a few moments whether it's for a few hours or it could change their whole life yeah. but you taking your time um and just honestly man just be a good person simple simple as that <laughs> yeah, yeah, i just yeah, like yeah. that's what i always say just be a good person it's not that hard right? you're tr- and think you're about like not people. hurting somebody else simple as like, there's simple. a few s- very simple rules just follow them just be a good person mm. don't try to cheat nobody be honest right um treat others as you want to be treated our you know our, our religion teaches all of that yep. every religion teaches you all of that yeah, yeah. right and you don't even have to look into a religion or study a religion know that just be a good human being mm-hmm. fucking simple as that yeah yeah, yeah. yeah right? I mean, and that's yeah. lacking big time oh yeah in, in today's world Espe- especially oh, well, going back to our culture but <laughs> for our culture but it's just like even within our culture too man it's just like it's <laughs> very very emotional it's always gusa it's always anger yeah. right and that's really been projected on on just like sikhism right it's just like you're always angry you always have this um this type of like um how would you say it? Th- that you always want to, that you might attack someone in a sense, right? Emotionally. So it's just, uh, and I think too, it's just, especially as ki- when we were kids and stuff, like we always had this ego, like we weren't able to build that connection with our parents and it just continues on uh, throughout life. So what I'm trying to say is that it's kind of leading into like self-development and that sort. You got to really understand how to really have emotional control. Yeah. Right. And that leads into being happy, like having, having a good mindset, having a good type of vibe throughout all the ups and downs. Because yeah. the thing is, like what you're saying, it reflects on other people that, you know, you interact with. If you have a bad vibe, if you, you know, if you say something against them, that's going to, again, that's going to target their trajectory too, their, yeah. their, their whole future too, right? So yeah. I, I think it's just a lot of people need to really focus on building themselves emotionally, like having emotional control, having their own self-worth, right? Having an understanding that shit is going to happen, yeah. right? It's just how you go through that journey. Yeah. So yeah. before being any type of successful, um, I strongly believe that you, you got to work on yourself. Personal development yep. is so huge, right? Yeah. Self-awareness is so huge. Mm-hmm. You got to be like, as I'm practicing it more and more and trying to be like, it, you can like, the, I, I've got a long journey ahead still. Yeah. But I'm right now I'm at a point where like, even if I, um, uh, sometimes I'll end up saying something and I'll go back to like, what was my reason for saying that? Yeah. What's the thought process behind it? Mm-hmm. Because now whatever thought that I had uh, reveals what my belief system is, right? Yeah. So I had that thought because I believe this. Yeah. Mm. Why do I believe that? Mm. I believe this. Is it first of all, is it like, you know, is it is this does this belief serve me mm. or does it, you know, is it harmful, right? Yeah. And if it doesn't serve me, then dig deeper into where it came from, mm. right? And that's the 
unraveling that's the kind of like you know peeling all these layers mm. off to become your true self right yeah. and that's what happens like you know whether it's our culture and i as i've had these conversations uh, a bunch of times with people yeah. when it when it comes to you know why our culture is the way it is yeah. uh, whether it's like you know whether it's business people not uh, being honest and you know the unethical doing tug, you know, whatever, all yeah. of that yeah. And I, I honestly believe that a big part of it is because of straight up the population in India. Mm. It's it, when you have so many people, Crowded into it, it's survival country. of the fittest, bro. <laughs> so you oh have yeah. to, you have to do yeah. back and like over there. So, these, some of these people have to do the chalakniya, right? They like they, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta feed your, your family. You, you gotta take care of your family. Yep. And it's been going on for so many generations in mm. our, in our, you know, back home yeah, that yeah. it's, it's in our culture now. It and is. I think so this is the time where like now that we have this awareness around it is we got to undo it, mm. right? We got to yeah. undo it one, one conversation at a time, we do. one, one business deal at a time. Wait, what, what do they call it? Uh, no. Scam or beat scam? <laughs> oh, scam. Or, yeah, I tell, I'll tell Mook, you know, he <laughs>, laughs at me for this. I'm, I'm like, in this world we live in, it, either you're doing the scamming, or, or are you, you getting scammed? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I tell him, I'm like, either you're getting scammed or you're doing doing the scamming. Yeah. That's what the world is, man. It is. Yeah, man. I, I, yeah, if yeah. you look at understanding, I'm like, yeah, it's a ruthless world out there. And then you know, and one thing I want to integrate, like you know, our culture is beautiful, man. And mm. um, I feel like you truly are representing in the right way. You you wear your pug with the as a crown, as a sense of a responsibility and understanding of what this represent is a lot of you know hardships, a lot of uh, sacrifice um we had to fight for this you mm-hmm. know and and we were talking you know to this gary um about this it's like what this representation of what having a pug means or carrying on carrying on what sikhi means mm-hmm. to our kids to our you know grandkids and you know i feel like nowadays um we're falling more and more behind because we're not as connected uh, with Sikhi period, I feel like more and more becoming it's like a hatred thing. I don't know. I, I don't know where it stems from. I don't know. It's because like our parents um, have this narrow mind where like, hey, this is how it is, and this is how you gotta carry it forward. Yeah. I don't know where it is from because like personally, like I, when I see people like yourself, it's like, man, I take pride in like the way this represent. I want to carry you forward. You know, do you feel like ha- how did that identify your identity? in regards to that put you today having this because having this th- th- it's a crown on our heads yeah. you know yeah. and it's a different responsibility because like i tell people like i don't like drinking i don't like smoking i don't like doing this reason why because i want to represent to the you know the highest level that i can and some people be like oh you but you gotta have fun but i'm like i am i, I yeah. don't gotta I, i'm gonna i want to represent this i want to represent it mm-hmm. and i feel like this is the way i feel like it should be represented and even if I don't have it, I, I, and this is how you still should represent it, just yeah. because you have it, it's a different understanding. You know, how did that kind of, I want to say, impacted you? Did that, like, understanding of what, you know, carrying a crown in a way, with your, when it comes to business ethic, the way you style yourself, the way you conduct your, you know, integrating everything? Because our, yeah. commu- our culture is what? Sikhi is about togetherness, mm-hmm. yeah. oneness, ikkumkar, yeah. right? So how did that impact you? Man, when you have a pug on, um, and I hope that everyone feels this way, that where is a pug, um, where is this crown, is that you, when you're, if you're about to do something wrong, you stop. You're mm-hmm. like, no, <coughs> if someone watches me do this, it's, it's on my pug, right? Yep. So you, you, you just like from the get go, you're, you're more responsible, right? You're, you're, you're trying to be a better human being. Yep. Mm. Just, a, a, you know, that pug places a lot of that responsibility Ability. on you yeah um and we carry it proudly right and then a religion also teaches us all of those values mm-hmm. right but the pug is a representation Asia. of that yep. right so not just you know that's how i've carried it but at the same time I, I i strongly believe that i've been able to you know do all of this and get to where i am mainly because of the pug, pug right? yep. if i was just uh, some other dude just dressing well there's only so far I could have gotten. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's the appreciation of the pug that all everyone else had too. So like, you know, here's a thing that dresses well, right? Here's a thing that's doing good in the community. It's like, you know, I, I've had so many younger guys reach up and like, you know, how do you do this? Like, I've, I've gone for coffees and I'll sit down with them. Like, I'll, I'll help out as much as I can, mm. right? Um, because I feel like I have that responsibility, responsibility yeah. right? So pug in, in terms of my identity, I, you know, I wear it with pride. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and I've I understand that I have a responsibility to act a certain way. Yeah. Right. So like even a big even role. for myself, right? Like it's kind of relating to that show, Just Meets Show. Oh yeah, right? yeah. He talks about it too. He's like, Why do we wear it? Why yeah. do we wear it? Uh, even with my dad, and when I was younger, I questioned yeah. him. I was like, He struggles with it. Like how how like what is this? What does this mean? He's like, Oh, to stand out. I was like. That's not good enough reason yeah. to me, honestly. Yeah. I mean, you're gonna stand out at regardless. Yeah. You ring a bug, yeah. right? So I was like, why? Why do I need to wear this, right? And I f- and it hit it hit hard. I was like struggling real hard because I was like, I was like, look, I I have to battle between being modern, sacrificing my hair all the way back yeah. there, yeah. <laughs> yo, straight up. <laughs> but but it's like being trying to be modern and westernized, but also sticking to your roots. And it's like, what what does this mean? Yep. right and it took me a very long time i'm like wait i'm like okay i need to dig in deeper to understand what our religion is what is sikhism why, why do we why do we have this type of status right we have these mm-hmm. warriors that defended our culture right our uh, defended sikhism even though there was not many of and us not just not just sikhism they defended everybody everybody, everybody. They defended uh, other people that religions. were oppressed yeah that was that was one of the that's one of the biggest things of yep. our religion is like to make sure that we, you know, w- if someone's being oppressed, yep. we stand, we you know, stand we with stand them, with them. Yeah. we, we stand take with care them. of them. Yeah, right? yeah. It's, it's a warrior mentality. Yeah. No, definitely, for sure, man. And it's just, you know, it took me very long to understand that because I was like, okay, well, my dad's, <laughs> <laughs> he's not, he can't really explain it properly, but yeah. I need to really true, uh, find a true reason as to why, like, why this is happening, right? Yeah, and, uh, and it was really, it was a battle between the two. And I was like, you know what, man? I was like, there's this warrior mindset. And I was like, if I want to have, this type of status, this, I mean, not a status, but this type of like confidence I want to have, this means something, no. right? It's a, it's, it's a whole identity with, with what I wear how I represent myself, how, how I talk to people. Right. Yeah. And that, that pushed me even further to love my religion, uh, love my religion, even more our culture, even more sickness. Yeah. Right. It's just, it's yeah. an understanding. It's understanding. Cause like even my, my mom, she told me at, uh, I was like 18, 17. She's like, if you want to cut it off, cut it off. I'm like, are you crazy? <laughs> Hell no, I'm not cutting this out. This yeah. is who I am. This yeah. is what I represent. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, what Mook r- kind of alluded to is we don't do our own due diligence in regards to what our culture is and what it's been through. Man, since the 1984, um, even early age, what our gurus fought for, I think that onus is upon us. It's 100%. not o- onus mm. is not upon us, but like, yo, like, no, man, do your own. Like, we it, gotta do the, the we one gotta put thing. In the work, yeah, yeah, like the one thing I did have criticism of that show is because he didn't show the side of the inner will to find out why I'm wearing this. I'm wearing this because, man, a gurus killed their like you know killed themselves for it. Mm. They're the kids that are like 10, 13, 6, 8. What for? They didn't have to do that. Yeah. They're mm-hmm. crazy. Like, why yeah. would they got to do that? But, but the reason why we did it, so we could wear it proudly in today's world and walk with our heads held high. And, you know, it, it, I'm telling you, it's funny. Like, you know, it gives me goosebumps, man. Like, I, I tell people, I'm like, I, I love what it represents. Yeah. I love carrying it with a, with a passion. And, and I love when people talk about it because a lot of people don't know about it. A yeah. lot of, like, you know, you get this negative sentiment. Like, I was in Cuba one time. And this one guy called me Osama. You know, yeah, someone yeah. could take it as an offense. Like, what's wrong with you? Like, what'd you call me? Like, I'm like, hey, listen, man. Like, that's not cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you can't say that to no one. You don't know where what this what this is. Uh, yeah. You don't know where I'm from. I sat him down. I'm like, hey, this is we're, we're from Punjab. It's a part of India, and this is what it is. He's like, oh, sorry, man. He's like, I didn't know any better. Yeah. But yeah. again, it's just understanding, it's educating, right? Educating, yeah. Educating. Yeah. Educating. Having People the calmness, know, right? Having yeah. the calmness, yeah. man. Yeah. But also, what the pug represents. One one little thing I just remembered, and I've heard this a bunch of times. In India, is like if there is a girl, because India is so bad for like the way it is, the rapes <laughs> and all that stuff. Yeah, there's a girl yeah. walking down um, the street, middle of the night. Um, she will feel much safer, safer if there's a thing yeah. that's there, if mm. she knows that she will be protected, protected. Mm-hmm. and yep, that's, a fact. Yep. Mm. that's a it fact. That's a fact. Where sex are known for that, right? Um, and that that's uh, it's part of our religion, religion it's part yeah. of our culture. A bug represents that when you see a thing. You feel safe, yep. yeah. Right, it's straight up. It is, yeah. No, nah, man, it's a funny. My cousin, um, <coughs> he was like deep into like Sikhi, like he loved. He uh, that's who I kind of gravitated towards understanding that. And then, man, he told me one time, he's like, there was a time, a period of frame where, if you're in a village, cops were literally looking for you, and you there was a point where if you like you're getting gunned down, and bec- just cause of wearing a pug. And mm-hmm. then that hit me, man. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, man, 
man. Just for what, what, what we went? 84. I was born in 84 July. Um, and the whole, everything happened in September, I guess, right? Yeah. Um, I was only a few months old. Uh, my parents told me this story. Um, so I was at my Nana Nani's house. Mm-hmm. Uh, and my dad was over to see me. Mm-hmm. And the the riots had just broken out. So they, uh, he was, after seeing me, he was going home on a scooter. And all of a sudden, the, one of the rickshaw driver goes, Siddharji, where are you going? Mm-hmm. They were killing all the things. He's mm-hmm. like, turn back around right now. So he quickly came back. Uh, but where we lived, because we from, uh, was born and raised in Delhi, and that's yeah. where all the riots oh, happened. Mm. So yeah, our yeah. house, um, where you know my dad, that guys lived, where I lived, uh, it was on a main street, yeah. right? And the house number was sixteen. Um, and uh, what they used to do, and during those riots, were they would f- uh, pack a bus with all the uh, all the, the goons, all the people, yeah. and they would go and find people and kill them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they, uh, we found out that they were coming to our. Uh, kind of our, our area, block yeah. our area so then um our, our neighbors and my chacha and my dad and my grandpa and stuff they all got together they set up a brick wall on top of the uh of the roof mm-hmm. they prepared these uh um uh bottle bombs right yeah. so they put like gasoline and yeah. you know gas and stuff uh and the word got out that s- uh solar number s- number 16 is prepared, prepared yeah, so yeah. they never ended up coming but that that's a, how they used to do it that's right? yeah, is, is it's crazy. That, when that you hear stories like that, man, is it's um, I think I think people should be prideful what this represent. Don't don't stray away from if someone calls you out of your name. As I said, man, like like I said, the Musa and one of the message he sent out there, what it uh, what it was, he's like, "Pagga banana yeah. lagyo," mm-hmm. and I'm like, I'm watching that, I'm like, damn, like, cause we're the last generation that's yeah. left, that's you know? left, yeah, yeah. And, and we must represent it, we must carry it forward, and you know. Sometimes, you know, it's just um, just that little understanding, 100%. you know, and yeah. it pushes it forward. And, you know, I, and one thing, like, as we're kind of like, you know, wrapping up things here, one thing I really want to do, like, your inspiration, as you said, like, being from, like, you know, a kid that who was kind of, like, shy, uh, not being confident in his skin, you know, and I feel like when you have that, it allows you to blossom even more. And it, cause you know, as you said, you get to a point of stage in life, cause you're like, I'm capable of doing that. I see myself doing that, mm-hmm. yeah. and you know, and, and I think it's a beautiful journey for all the kids out there to kind of understand. You're not always gonna be sure about you know where you are in life, yeah. and mm-hmm. you, you're not gonna be most confident at a young age, or even like you know age that you feel like you should have everything figured out. You know, and I think you shouldn't get deterred by that. Rather, you should take inspiration towards that guy. You're having those thoughts. Yeah. Hmm. The fact that you're just having those thoughts, you should be proud of yourself because you're putting yourself in a situation where you you you're like I put myself in a position to grow now. Yeah. A- and and I'm here and for yourself. And I think a lot of people can take you know aspiration in regards to that. You put yourself in a position where like oh shit, I don't want to be here. I don't want to be an IT tech going <laughs> on to year twelve. No yeah. chance, you know. And another thing I think I want to point out is you had a plan. Yeah. People yeah. dive in. They want to dive ahead, like you know. They want to dive into a pool without knowing, learning how to swim. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, you you were working a full time job, yeah. but you sacrificed your time along that process. You know what? If I really want to do this, I gotta figure out. I gotta set time for this, yeah. but I gotta know my responsibility financially. I gotta take care of this. I can't just quit my job. Be like, be it's all yeah. good. Like my parents will help me. No, 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 yeah. no, 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 no. Yeah. If you want to pursue your dreams, that's on you. Yeah. You can't push it on your mama, your tai, your chacha, your sister, your dad, mom, nobody. Yeah. I, your onus is upon yourself. Mm-hmm. And that's what I tell people. If you want you want really want to do something, take the onus upon yourself. 100%. Start working extra jobs. You can't want this but don't want to do that. Yeah. You know? You got to hustle. Yeah. yeah, and then I feel like th- that's a perfect example for yourself or where you have to other people like yourself that you had a plan and – you put aside, be like, okay, I can't quit my job and just do this full time. Yeah, that's yeah. foolish. <laughs> I got families, <laughs> got responsibilities. Yeah. So, I think people's gotta understand, like in life, you gotta have to sacrifice. Man, you gotta something. You gotta make it work. Um, when I was when I was at that IT job, um, yep. when I was trying to make this old fashioned thing work, I remember I used to uh, when I started cold calling people and all that stuff. Mm. Um, I had to go meet them for coffee. So now I would combine my two 15 minute breaks and my hour break and I would go meet people during that coffee break or I'd be when I first started off I just used to um, put the point the camera to myself yeah. show my outfit and stuff 
when I first started off, man, making a simple video that would now take me six, seven seconds to make, <laughs> it should take me 15, 15 minutes because I wasn't yeah. comfortable. But mm. every single day, practice, uh, I would practice, take practice. time out on my lunch. And I and I remember the area across from my work. I would go there so nobody could see me. Mm. Uh, there's a little hidden area. And I would record these videos every single day. I kept doing it, kept doing it. Every chance that I got after work, uh, there was a point where I my, my schedule used to be set in 15 minute intervals yeah. i used to wake up at 4 30 in the morning do my meditation journaling go for a walk then go to the gym yeah. be home by seven o'clock so i could go to work nine to five after work i would come home um sit down do all of the you know yeah. build my website do all the blogging and stuff uh until a point where when i did that program in langera so then i would just mm. my whole day was accounted for but i like you said, I had a plan. I had a purpose. When once I made a decision, I'm like, I got to make this work. Yep. Right. Yeah. So I gave it my all. Yeah. Right. And, and that's yeah. what you got to do. I think, though, like the two things to take away from what you said is just being so blinded with wh- who you want to become. In other words, it's like it's it's a bad habit uh, of me, too, because I mean, Amr says too, like he's like, oh, you need to chill. Yeah. <laughs> Every time this guy calls, I was like, I'm either saying I'm on the laptop or doing something else. Cause yeah. I was like, dude, I, I just, <laughs> I cannot chill. Like, yeah. it's just, it becomes such a curse. Yeah. Cause you're just like, this is who I want to become. But the only way I become this person and how I want to succeed is if I put in the time with putting more time into it, you have to make sacrifice. Yeah. Right. And yeah. of course we talked to Gary, you know, there's the type of sacrifice and what you want to, you know, it depends on each person. But I'm like, man, like if I don't, get stuff done on that day and i'm trying to chill with my buddies and stuff my mind is still on that exactly yeah. right and it's just you know going back to what you said man it's just like whether you have 30 minutes whether you have one hour whatever time you have you know you got to put it towards that because it just stacks up every yeah. time yeah. right but and now it's to where, where like you have your own business you, you're creating stuff you're using creativity you're 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 bringing this dream that your clients have into reality you bring right. the people together yeah. man yeah no man I, I i mentioning the word dream i remember um and there's, there's some some moments that you you know there's gonna get they get etched in your in your mind you never forget yeah. i remember sitting on the sky train station uh, on the sky train uh, entering granville station where there's a, there's a tunnel there and i'm going looking out the window going man it'd be so awesome to have my own uh clothing line, clothing line. Mm. Mm. and here i am I'm like i have my own clothing line yeah, i'm yeah. like there is there's so many things that and I, and I feel like I and I'm realizing this more and more is I've spoken a lot of things into existence. And for me, that's worked really well. Yo, mm, Anything I want to do, I just keep. And now I, I am more intentional about it. Yeah. And I'll just keep repeating it because I know that I'm one accountability. If yeah. I tell 10 people I'm going to do something, <laughs> I'm, I'm holding myself accountable, accountable in a yeah, way. Yeah. Like, you know, I'm, I'm going to make it happen. Yeah. Right. But speaking things into existence, I think that's kind of been my that, that's been my whole journey. I've always just said like, you know what, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this, and next thing you know, if a year later or six months later, I'm like, and oh shit, doing it. yeah, it's happened already, yeah. Yeah. right? So, yeah. no. oh man, it's been amazing. No, it's been. I mean, I think more people should follow along. It's a it's a beautiful journey, man. Um, any upcoming projects that you have, like you feel like you want to get out there, something <laughs> that you know you feel like is out of the world to think about, maybe like you want to you want to have a runway down in, you know how they have yeah, these yeah. crazy ones in yeah. was um, usually ways of Paris. They yeah, hold these. Cra- yeah, yeah. Few what what are your some crazy like you know th- some things you feel like that's out of you know your imagination that like yeah. man I w- I love to see one day like I'm walking my models or whatever it is my yeah. creation yeah, yeah. walking down the Paris runway or these fashion shows. Yeah. What's like well that, that, that's coming as well. Uh, right now, I've just been super focused on uh, my new showroom. So I'm, mm. uh, you know, um, building out a new showroom. Super excited about that. And one, um, well, for me, it's a big, big thing. Is like, I've, I've once again written it down and I've uh, spoken it out into the world, uh, into the universe. And I yeah. know it's gonna, I know it's gonna happen. Is um, I want Diljeet to come there and shoot a <laughs> music video mm. or do a photo shoot because man yeah, he's th- coming that guy's down yeah he's coming, he's so, coming. Like, yeah, yeah. so i'm trying to like get the showroom ready <laughs> for ready. i'm going to the i'm going to the concert, concert yeah. but uh he's played a big big role in you know my whole the way i've changed my image and everything mm. and the way, the way i fashion. feel where i am yeah. where i'm at and i know it's true for so many things out there as well 
Um, so once again, the, this is right now me just speaking it out, yep. yeah. uh, putting it out yeah, into the it's universe. Gonna happen, it's going to happen. It's, it's going to happen. 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 Hey, man, sure. hey, well, wish you the luck. And, yeah. hey, Diljit, and you know what's so funny? Diljit's such a cool guy. When you look at his personality, the way so he chill. carries himself, yeah. so it's chill. like, damn, man, like, I can do this shit too. Yeah, you know what I mean? It makes you comfortable, especially <laughs> wearing a pug. He, he, he yeah. carries it too. Like, so fashionable. He's yeah. so confident in everything he wears. Mm. And it just shows how many doors they opened up for him. Because sure. if you look at his early age, if you look time. at his journey. Yeah. <laughs> from uh, seen, from yeah. like... Wh- Smile, like, a whole... Yeah, that song? <laughs> <laughs> that, who's this? You see the awkward, awkward little singer that coming <laughs> yeah. about. Yep, yep. Then how to, like, d- dressing while they were just like, they see dressing out yep. normal. <laughs> and to see where he is now, that and trajectory... international stage doing all these collaborations and stuff. Insane, and it's insane. just... And once again, that's one person who's just being himself. He's being his true self, right? And people are appreciating it. It's just, you know... He, he's connected. You could tell. You could. You could tell he's connected. I met the guy. I w- I almost styled him uh, for his uh, movie. Music video. Hans Larek. Oh, was Hans, it Hans Larek with the kid. I think. I, I think it was. Hans yeah. Larek. I, I the kid's yeah, name was. was. So I al- yeah. almost styled him for that movie just to oh. work out. Um, but I met him. Super humble. Super dope guy, man. Mm-hmm. So I uh, I I'm hoping to. Well, not hoping to. I'm, uh, we'll see. And I will. I will. You will. Oh, don't oh, worry. Wow. <laughs> spam him up. They'll yeah, everybody the call him. Everybody, <laughs> everybody <laughs> spam it up. So hey, hey, man. Uh, Cam, bottom of my heart, man. Thank you. Appreciate um, it, man, so much. It's uh, it means a lot for us, you know, that if someone like you that's able to come on a platform and to spread awareness about, you know, especially being sayings and you know being confident in your own skin mm-hmm. and carry and you know be fashionable. We, yep. we can be fashionable. We're not just uh, you know stuck in this thing where oh you gotta dress this way. Nah, man. Nah, it's a uh, it's a beautiful message you're putting out. And, you know, any shout outs you want to do or the things that you have coming up or any links or where they can find you, your show. I appreciate you guys. Uh, yeah. you know, f- once again, thinking that I uh, my story was uh, worthy of being shared. Uh, and oh I man, appreciate oh you guys uh, <laughs> having me on here. I just want to say, man, anyone wanting to, uh, you know, he was a kid born and raised in India, thought he was going to be a computer programmer, um, <laughs> worked in IT for 11 years. And then at the age of 30, he just c- did a complete 180 and changed his uh, career, right? Mm-hmm. Um so on that note, I just want to say, man, whatever that y- whatever is it it is that you want to do, you're able to do it. It's all in your mind, man. It's yeah. just all a mind game. Yeah. Uh, once you put your mind to it, you can do it. It sounds very cliche, but it is very, very true. It so very true. I hope that uh, anyone listening, they're able to uh, pursue their dreams and uh, I'll make them yeah, come true. Follow it up. Yeah, yeah. Man. I mean, a g- great quote to finish it off with is by Les Brown. I live, I live by it. Uh, He's a motivational speaker. A lot of his uh, speaking, I love listening to him. Um, yep. He speaks beautiful words. Mm-hmm. And um, he says this, greatness is within you. Mm-hmm. Man, p- read it over and over and it'll come to fruition, man. Yep. Anything you do in life. So 100%. On that note, man, thank you, man. Right, appreciate you, man. appreciate y'all. it, y'all. Appreciate it, boys. All right, boys. Yeah. Take right, care. And girls. <laughs> 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 yeah, uncle, anybody that tuned in, thank y'all, man. Yeah. <laughs> Peace. <laughs>